Boys and girls, it's science time. Today we're going to do an experiment called air and water. Now, if you want to do this experiment after the video, you just have to ask a grown-up for something you can put water in. It doesn't have to be a pitcher. It could be a bowl. Something small to put water in and a dry napkin or a paper towel. You Right now, what you need to do, though, is you need to go ask your grown-up for your air and water paper that's in your science kit and a pencil. Hit pause, go get those supplies and come back to me. All right, here we go. Today we're gonna learn about air and water. It says it down here on the bottom, air and water. It says vial and paper towel. A vial is a teeny little container, which I didn't have at home. So I just used a little jar. It could be a little cup, any smaller container. And then inside, I didn't have a paper towel, but I had a dry um, napkin. So I'm using that. So I'm gonna stick my napkin inside my jar and let's see what's next. What do you think will happen if I push the vial, in this case, the jar, into the water? What will happen to the air inside the jar when I submerge it? First of all, what does it mean to submerge? Think about it. If I push it down in the water, what would submerge mean? If you're thinking it means to go under the water, you're right. Like when you're swimming or in the bathtub, if you put your head under the water, you submerge, okay? So what will happen to the paper towel or the napkin when I submerge the jar, when I put it under the water? What will happen to the paper towel? There we go. And what will happen to the air inside? So those are our two questions. So I want you thinking about the air that's in here and thinking about the napkin that's in here. What will happen when I put them under the water? Let's find out. So I'm gonna take it and I'm turning it upside down and watch closely, but I'm going to stick it in here and I'm going to push it down under the water. And I'm gonna pull it out of the water and we'll see, but I want you to be thinking, what happened to the napkin? And what happened to the air? So first I'm gonna dry off the outside and I'm gonna dry off my hands. And then let's reach inside and the napkin is still dry. How can that be? Am I a magician? <laughs> no, I actually don't know any magic tricks at all. It's science. So why did the napkin stay dry? Let's look, that's our next question. Why didn't the paper towel get wet? Why didn't that napkin get wet? Think about what is inside this jar that kept the napkin dry? I'll give you a hint, it's invisible. If you're thinking air, you're right. There's air inside this jar and that's what kept the napkin dry when we put it under the water, when we submerged it. All right, so now, what happens if I let some of the air out of the vial? So this time, I'm gonna put it under the water again, but while it's under the water, I'm gonna tip it. And I think you'll see the air come out if you watch closely, so watch and see. But I want you to be thinking, what will happen to the napkin if we let some of the air out? Okay, so here we go. So we have our dry napkin in there again. This time, we're going under the water again. Now watch closely, I'm gonna let some air out. What did you see? I'll do it again. How can you tell the air is coming out? If you saw the bubbles, you're right. That's proof that the air is coming out. Now, when we let the air out, what happens to the napkin inside? I'm gonna dry off my hands again. And I'm gonna reach in and it's still dry. Got a tiny bit wet. Now, why didn't it get all the way wet? Did I let all of the air out or just some of it? If you said some of it, you're right. Should we try it a third time? Okay, this time I'm gonna let all of the air out 
And then what do you think will happen to the napkin then? Let's see. So I'm gonna put our dry napkin back in the jar. We're going to submerge our jar a third time upside down. And now watch as I let the air out. Look at all the air that was in that jar. Now it's all out. That's all the bubbles. So now I notice that our jar sinks. It doesn't float anymore before I had to push it down. Let's see what happened to that napkin. It came right out and it's soaking wet. Why is that boys and girls? When the air came out of the jar, what went in? If you said water, you're right. When the air came out of the jar, the water went in the jar, but not right away. First, we just let out some of the air and then a little water went in, but it didn't go way at the top where the napkin was. When we let all the air out, then the whole jar filled with water and then it sunk to the bottom because air is lighter than water. Sometime when you're swimming, if you go to swimming lessons, you can try it with a grown-up helping you or even in the bathtub. You go under the water full of air and you will float. If you go under the water and blow all your air out, it will be easier for you to lay on the bottom of the bathtub or to sit on the bottom of the shallow end of the swimming pool. It's kind of a fun trick with a grown-up, of course. All right, boys and girls, you might wanna try this at home, but before you do, I need you to write on your paper. The question is, how can water be used to show that air takes up space? How do we know air takes up space? Because air was in the jar, wasn't it? Yes, and we saw it come out when we saw the, if you said bubbles, you're right. So I want you to write a sentence about what you learned. We're not doing this part down here, so don't worry about that. But I want one sentence, excuse me, on here about what you learned about air taking up space and how you know for sure. You could draw a picture down on the bottom too. All right, have fun with your science experiment. See you next time.